Section 2.43, the energy of a continuous charge distribution. So we've already found out the energy to assemble a series of point charges is one half the sum of every point charge times the potential. And caveat, this potential does not include the point charge itself, right? Well, for a, a volume charge, we get one half the integral of rho V d tau. And for surface area, area charge, we get sigma V dA. And finally, for uh, linear charge densities, lambda V dL. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna take this one, and we're gonna recall that rho is equal to minus epsilon naught, the divergence of the electric field. Okay. So this one becomes the work becomes one or epsilon naught over two, integral of times v not dot product, just times v. Okay, so we have the, the scalar product of a, hold on, these, these are just two scalars multiplied by each other. The divergence is a scalar and that's a scalar. So this is something times something. Now, if we go into the back of the book, okay, and we look at product rule number five, okay, product rule number five, that reads as follows. I'm gonna write this in a different color. So we have the divergence of some scalar um, field times a vector field is equal to that scalar field times the divergence of that vector field uh, plus this other term plus the vector field dot the gradient of that scalar field. Okay, so this term right here, it's a different color. This term right here is the same as this right here, where V is the F and E is the vector field. So let's rewrite that this way. <clears throat> so we have epsilon naught over two. So we have the divergence of V, E, and uh, is that negative? That's gotta be negative. No, that's, that's positive, and then we subtract out. Yes, we subtract out um, the vector field dot the gradient of the potential. Okay, and all of that is d tau. Okay, well what's the gradient of the potential? The gradient of the potential is minus the electric field. So now we have epsilon naught. My epsilons are getting more and more funky as time goes on. The divergence of the two fields multiplied by each other plus, because the minus is a cancel, e squared d tau. So, um, we're not done yet. Um, if we apply Gauss's theorem, or the divergence theorem, to this guy, this part right here. So we go some volume integral times the divergence of some field, um, which is a scalar times the volume is equal to the surface integral of that field dot the flux. Okay, so we rewrite that that way. So this is equal to epsilon naught. Oh, that one's actually kind of nice. The integral of VE dot dA. This is the surface of this volume that we're doing. Um, plus epsilon naught over two times the integral of e squared d tau. Bear with me, we're almost done. So um, what volume, what surface are we talking about? And we can imagine, you know, we could start with the volume that just encloses the, the charges. So anywhere in space where there's, there's a non-zero charge density, we're gonna include that in the integral. Or we can blow this up bigger and bigger and you know consume the entire universe, 
right? Well, if we use a very large volume, then the electric field at infinity, and indeed the potential at infinity should be zero, right? So we can actually say for very large volumes that's zero, okay? And so we're left with the simple result that the energy it takes to assemble a continuous charge distribution is just equal to epsilon naught over two times the integral, the volume integral of E squared d tau. That is a very, very interesting result. Okay, and this is the result that suggests that um, the energy is actually stored in the electric field and not in the particle some way. Okay, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but this should excite you, this is fun. This is getting super interesting. This is a result that, you know, yeah. All right, have fun, bye.